Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today on this video of how to demonstrate a Palo Alto Networks firewall. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And uh, a couple things. Uh, this video is part one of two, so be sure to check out the second part. Um, in an upcoming video, we are doing just the App Command Center and a few links from the Application Command Center. All right, so starting out, I've logged into our Palo Alto firewall here, and you know the first thing that usually comes up here is the dashboard. And uh, you know, to be fair, I don't spend a whole lot of time on the dashboard. There are a lot of really, really exciting things about the Palo Alto firewall. The dashboard is very familiar to most people, and they've seen dashboards like this before. The only Probably significantly different thing is the fact that this is all AJAX based so you can kind of customize to the way that you want to. Um, there are a couple of panels here that are different, the top applications and application command center risk factor, but we'll look at those in more detail. Uh, one of the things I will tell you is that this demo is fantastic. We usually get a very strong response from customers out of this. So I've gone ahead and clicked on the ACC, the Application Command Center. This is where we're going to see a lot of really, really interesting things that most firewalls just do not give you. So by now you've probably talked with your customer about application ID, and this is where we start to see some of those key components. So um, this top panel here that we're looking at is the applications that we've seen in the last hour by application ID. Uh, we can actually filter that on, say, the high-risk applications. And then when we do that, you'll see things like BitTorrent, Facebook, uh, Gmail, MySpace. Uh, some of these things really would just appear as port 80 traffic to most firewalls, but here we identify them by their application ID signature, which is tremendous. And the next panel that we'll see down here is actually the URL filtering categories. Again, we do URL filtering on the device, so that's fantastic as well. It's an excellent tool for doing URL filtering. If we scroll down a little bit further, a threat prevention. Again, we also do intrusion prevention services. So we're looking here for threats, vulnerabilities, um, spyware, antivirus. Uh, and this, this can be very unique. We'll come back to this in just a moment. The data filtering also has the capability to look at documents and file types that are going through the network. So we'll, you see here, we'll, we'll see file types such as PowerPoint, GZIP, uh, Office documents, CAP files, and credit card filter. So we'll look for particular algorithms for credit card numbers or social security numbers as well. So uh, I typically don't spend a lot of time on that in the demo. The things that are most interesting are usually application ID, user ID. Um, and let me demonstrate uh, for user ID some of the things that are very interesting here. So if your customer is interested in threat prevention, I usually do this piece where I will filter here on viruses and we'll see that in the last hour we have seen a couple viruses on the network. If I click on one of these viruses, it will take me here to a page where I get a little bit of information about it, but more importantly, I get the top attackers, which is this Perfora.net, which happens to be a webmail application, and I get the top victims with their user ID, which is great. <laughs> Far are we from the time when we'd have to actually just track down this, this victim by an IP address and remediate that user. We now know which user actually has the virus. We can go remediate them immediately. This user ID is very powerful, integrates very well with Active Directory customers. Um, so uh, we can take that a little bit further when we tie this into application identification. So I'll click back again here and, and go back to application identification. Uh, Again, I may sort here on high-risk applications. Uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll ask a customer to pick out an application that's a problem in, for them and their environment. Uh, oftentimes BitTorrent is one, um, maybe YouTube, maybe uh, uh, one of the webmail applications. But for now, let's just click BitTorrent. So as I do this, um, I point out that this first panel that shows up when I click on this is a description of the application. Well, we all know what BitTorrent is. There may be applications that you're not familiar with. Last week, I came across a customer who was having uh, a peer-to-peer -peer sharing application from China called uh, Shunlei. I had no idea what this application was, but it actually gave me a description here, some links to the outside world on what the application does, and some information about it as well. So BitTorrent here gets a risk rating of 5, and that's what affects the overall risk rating of the box. We rank it based on these applications and what how much of, of those uh, applications we're seeing that are high risk. So uh, then we 
we rank it also again by the number of uh, yeses perhaps that we answer to some of these questions. Capable is it capable of file transfer? Is it used by well malware? Does it contain excessive bandwidth use? Is it evasive? So. Um, Based on that, you, we assign a risk rating. You can change this if this is an application that was a little bit uh, lower risk for you for your environment. Beyond that panel, we also see the top sources. Um, again, with user ID, huge. This is great. So we see the sources of this application, the destinations for this application, source countries, destination countries, um, some security rules that it may have crossed, URL filtering categories that may have also been affected by this traffic. So. Uh, yeah, so this is great. Um, a lot of people ask about these countries, uh, and they find that when they see a lot of traffic to China, that becomes a, a problem for them. So it's, it's very interesting to have that data available. So if we take this then and we drill down a bit further, we can click on this user, Lucas Johnson. We can now see that we're building an actual filter here. This is all the BitTorrent traffic associated just with Lucas Johnston. So that's great. Um, all the same information appears, so sources, in this case just Lucas Johnston, top destination, um, looks like a lot of these are outside, top destination countries, security rules, etc. So same stuff we saw before, but now let's take a look at just what Lucas Johnston was doing. We can actually clear BitTorrent from our filter, and now we'll get traffic associated just with Lucas Johnston. So this is great. Um, because now we can see things like what it is that he's been doing in terms of his applications, um, his destinations, uh, his countries, of course, but also his URL filtering categories. So this is hugely interesting. Um, this can be very powerful, and uh, if we choose to do so, uh, even more importantly, we can create reports on this, and we'll look at that in the second piece of the demo. But for now, another thing I'll point out that's, that's also really, really great is being able to tie this directly to logs. So if we take a look at this, you'll see these icons up here in the top right where we see the traffic log, the uh, threat log, uh, the URL filtering log. So uh, let's just click on the traffic log. So we, if we click on this traffic log icon, this will take us to the traffic log, all associated just for this user. So uh, this traffic log is now filtered based on the last hour. That's what we were looking at in the App Command Center. And the source user of Lucas Johnson. So this is all his traffic, which is very interesting. So um, so this is great. I, I, I truly believe this is a, a hugely unique component. Being able to do all this from the firewall without having to go outside and have an external uh, set of other systems like a, a SIM or... Um, or an external network management server. It's amazing to be able to do this just from the firewall. So, okay. So at this point, um, I usually jump from here to policy creation, URL filtering, and some monitoring. And so I'm going to save that for part two of the demo. And for now, I'll thank you so much for joining, and I'll see you in part two. Thank you very much.